At the height of the Korean War, the United States and its United Nations allies successfully pushed back the North Korean and Chinese armies that threatened to take over South Korea. However, this was not enough to stop the restless Chinese forces. Using overwhelming force and plenty of artillery, the Communists seized control of six outposts guarded by the outgunned and outmanned U.S. Marines in October of 1952. And just when everything seemed lost and the Chinese were about to march into Seoul, the surviving Marines regrouped for one desperate last stand at a point known as the Hook. The outcome of the Korean War now rested on their shoulders. Fortifying the Hook As the Korean War raged on in mid-1950, the United States, South Korea, and United Nations troops fought tirelessly to push back the communist foe to the 38th parallel and beyond. The front was eventually stabilized for a brief period when the U.S. and its allies established a series of military outposts across the MLR, or Main Line of Resistance, to bring any North Korean or Chinese attempt at breaking through friendly territory to a complete halt. By March of 1952, the U.S. Marine Corps First Division was relocated to the Jamestown Line, close to the Semichan Valley. The Marines were covered on their left flank by Britain's 1st Commonwealth Division, and the 1st Korean Marine Corps were then relocated to Jamestown to fight alongside their American counterparts. Meanwhile, on the other side of the line, the Chinese People's Volunteer Army had assembled over 50,000 men from the 63rd and 65th Armies that were eager to join the fray. The outnumbered 25,000-strong 1st Marine Division was tasked with defending the entire sector, especially the Hook, a thumb-like area that protruded beyond the MLR zone and was key to dominating the Semichan Valley. General Lemuel C. Shepard, commander of the U.S. Marine Corps, was worried about the rough terrain that his colleagues would be defending from possible enemy attacks. The zone was steep, rocky, and full of hills. If the Chinese were able to break through the line of defense, they would have an open road straight into the heart of South Korea and its capital, Seoul. Even worse, they could flank the UN lines by their right, cut off the Marines from the British 1st Commonwealth Division, and march directly into the Imjin River. For the following months and up to the summer of 1952, the Marines and other UN units would fight the Chinese and Korean Communists over control of a series of hills that were essential to control areas near the border between North and South Korea. These confrontations were known as the Outpost Battles by the Marines. Their objective was to control critical stations where troops lived, rested, and fought to protect a territory extension. During the last days of September, the 7th Marines Regiment relieved the 5th Regiment and occupied the Jamestown Line near the infamous Hook area. The Marines took over seven existing outposts named Carson, Reno, Vegas, Berlin, Detroit, and Frisco. The men also hurriedly built three small combat outposts named Seattle, Warsaw, and Verdun. An average distance of 500 yards separated each outpost, and Seattle and Warsaw were the most exposed and isolated as they occupied lower hills. The 7th Marines was composed of 5,000 men that had to manage to protect the hook at all costs, and so-called clutch platoons were formed to increase manpower as much as possible. Marine cooks, clerks, and vehicle personnel all received the call to arms to become reserve rifle platoons. The Americans were outnumbered and outgunned, and the 7th Marines were pitched against the Chinese 356th and 357th Regiments of the 119th Chinese Division. Numbering 7,000 men, the Communists also had plenty of firepower and ammunition, totaling 10 battalions of artillery. In contrast, the Americans barely had 120 artillery pieces, and they lacked artillery shells to provide adequate support. Then, on October 2nd, just days after establishing the new outposts, the Chinese attacked the American garrisons. A hellish battle. The Chinese People's Volunteer Army, or PVA, started by throwing a diversionary attack on the Detroit outpost before launching a full-scale maneuver on Seattle and Warsaw. Enemy artillery pummeled the Marine emplacements and breached the outpost perimeter. Still, the Americans fought back with everything they had. While defending the Warsaw outpost, Private Jack W. Kelso saved his brothers-in-arms by throwing back an enemy grenade that landed on his bunker. The grenade exploded on his left arm, but Kelso kept providing covering fire while the Marines retreated from the outpost. Kelso's last stand saved the lives of a dozen Marines and earned him a posthumous Medal of Honor. However, the fight was just getting started, and more Marine lives would be claimed. Seattle was the next to fall, and all its defenders lost their lives. Captain John H. Thomas, in charge of Company 1, counterattacked viciously, but the Chinese held their ground. The Marines were then forced to fall back when Chinese artillery superiority overpowered the American howitzers. Thirteen soldiers were downed, and more than 90 were injured. Enemy attacks continued the following days, but the Marines held their ground. The PVA then launched another large-scale attack on October 6th and surrounded several outposts. Detroit was overrun, and all of its defenders perished. Chinese artillery decimated the friendly lines, but Marine bunkers lighted up and decimated any communists that dared cross the perimeter while they reloaded. 
The Marines in the bunkers made use of every round and grenade at their disposal to force the enemy into retreat, but it was of no use, as there were hundreds of them. The 1919 Browning machine guns went dry very quickly. The barrels were hot because of the continuous fire, and with smoke coming out of their noses, the Marines resorted to their trusty eight-bullet clip M1 Garands and their bayonets to get the job done. While defending outpost Frisco, north of Detroit, Marine artillery momentarily pushed back the Chinese, but at the sound of horns at midnight, the Communists renewed the offensive and advanced restlessly. They then broke through the trenches despite strong resistance from the Marines. During the advance, Staff Sergeant Louis G. Watkins tried to push back the enemy. Despite being wounded, Watkins pinned down a Chinese machine gun emplacement while his men moved forward. Then, while advancing through the trenches, Watkins jumped over an enemy grenade thrown towards his men and protected them from the blast. Watkins' selfless sacrifice saved his unit and earned him a posthumous Medal of Honor. As the days passed, the Jamestown line began to tremble. The 7th Marines had lost Detroit, Seattle, and Frisco, and the South Korean Marines had also retreated from the other three outposts. Six outposts had been lost in total. Last Stand at the Hook After taking over the outposts, Chinese activity decreased and was reduced to scattered firefights between reconnaissance platoons. But the Marines knew something big was coming. During the last week of October, the enemy began to use its artillery superiority to destroy the outposts and improvised bunkers again. The artillery concentrated on Ronson, Warsaw, and Hook. The Marines countered with their own batteries and airstrikes and braced for one last assault. On the night of October 26th, mortar and artillery fire pummeled Ronson, and the Marine riflemen were completely surrounded. Using every bullet, clip, bayonet, and grenade at their disposal, the Marines engaged the enemy in close quarters combat, but none survived. Another fellow Marine, 2nd Lieutenant Sherrod Skinner Jr., earned a third posthumous Medal of Honor after rolling over a grenade and protecting the men who lay with him in a bunker. At the same time, the Chinese launched an attack on Warsaw using the same technique. Realizing that he was outnumbered and outgunned from every side, Lieutenant John Babson from Company A, 1st Battalion, called in the radio and desperately yelled, quote, Box me in! Babson was referring to an artillery barrage that formed a protective barrier around the outpost. It was a desperate move that could result in friendly losses, but there was no other way out of the onslaught. Despite the thousands of artillery rounds that destroyed everything outside the perimeter, the Chinese still broke through. Primal hand-to-hand -hand combat ensued, and the last radio message from Warsaw that was heard was, quote, We are being overrun. Radio silence followed, and a platoon that rushed to help their comrades only found three Marines alive. More than 34,000 artillery rounds were not enough to stop the Chinese advance from converging on the hook. After the Chinese took over most of the area, the Marines regrouped and counterattacked in the early hours of October 27th. Outposts Reno, Carson, and Vegas successfully halted the Communist attacks, and the Marines then launched several attacks on the hook from different positions and outsmarted the entrenched Chinese. By midnight of October 28th, the Communist forces were surrounded with no way out. They were pinned by American artillery and Marines firmly dug in the bunkers where their countrymen had lost their lives days before. By 6 a.m., when dense fog settled over the Hook, the last enemy remnants were eliminated. The battle for the Hook and the Marine outposts had finally ended. Ultimately, the Chinese lost about a thousand men, while the Marines lost 70 of their own, with more than 400 wounded. After the battle, the 29th British Infantry Brigade of the 1st Commonwealth Division was tasked with defending the Hook, leaving behind what is still regarded as one of the bloodiest battles of the Korean War. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below if you'd like a specific story to be featured in one of our videos.